What's up, everybody? It's 2023. Gmail's almost been around for 20 years, but most of you are still just scratching the surface of what's possible with it. Let's change that by implementing these 23 power user tips that'll level up your email game in 2023. Don't you hate discovering a typo or realizing you forgot an attachment right after hitting send? Gmail actually has an undo send feature, which you can find by going to settings, then see all settings, and then under general, find undo send and crank the cancellation period up to 30 seconds, giving you up to half a minute to retract an email you've sent and fix it. Pressing the forward slash whilst in Gmail will take you to the search bar. Once there, you can type specific words in the Gmail search bar known as search operators to narrow down your search. For example, you can search emails sent by a specific recipient using from. Find emails that contain a YouTube video with has YouTube or is unread to find unread emails. And there are many more of these. You can find a link with all of them in the video description. You can also search your email from your Chrome address bar by setting up a site search. In Chrome, go to settings, search engine, manage search engines and site search, and then press add. For search engine, write Gmail. For shortcut, write a quick string that you'll remember. For example, GM. In the last field, Copy this URL, which you'll find in the video description. And now whenever you write your shortcut and hit tab, you'll be able to search your email no matter what site you're currently on. The best time to send an email is when someone's most likely to read it. And this is especially true if your recipient is in a different time zone or if they have a cluttered inbox. Figure out when they're most likely to respond and use schedule sent to have the email sent at exactly that time to have it land on top of their inbox. If you're noticing yourself repeating the same email often, next time, save your composed message as a reusable template. First, go to settings, then see all settings and click on advanced. Select enable under the template section and save your changes. Now, whenever you write an email, which you can also initiate by pressing C, you can click more templates, save draft as template, and then save as new template. This is also where you can override existing templates. And to use one, go to the same menu and select insert template. Instead of pressing the send button, you can also use the control or command plus enter hotkey. This tip is for those who are using a task manager, which if you aren't, well, what are you doing? Head over to my playlist and find one, then come back to this tip, which is to integrate Gmail with it. Many of them, such as TickTick, Todoist, and Asana, have a pre-built add-on that allow you to forward emails into your to-do app with ease and turn it into a reading task, support information for a project, or something to reference later on. Even more apps have a custom email address that you can forward things to in order to achieve the same result. Gmail comes shipped with a couple of standard categories for incoming email. These include social, promotions, updates, and a couple more. And while their intended purpose is to save your so-called primary inbox from being overloaded with messages, they do more harm than good, in my opinion, as they are a procrastination enabler. Instead of actually dealing with inputs coming your way, you can just click on another tab. Instead, I recommend using unread first mode, which bundles everything in one inbox, forcing you to deal with whatever's coming your way. If you see something you don't want to receive again, don't just ignore it, delete, unsubscribe or block the sender to keep your inbox actually clean. No masking or filters required. In Gmail, you can adjust the positioning of your reading pane. And I found that positioning it right off the inbox is the perfect blend between quick processing email, because you can still see the list on the left, whilst retaining readability, which I feel is worse if you split it horizontally. You can set it up under quick settings, reading pane. Speaking of quick processing, whatever's to the left of the reading pane, you can select all emails by pressing asterisk plus A. You can undo it by pressing asterisk plus plus N, and if you on only select red conversations, you can use asterisk plus R or asterisk plus U for unread emails. With what you've selected, you can press the hash to delete it all, the exclamation mark to mark it as spam, or E to archive it. Whenever an email conversation thread ends with what you're sending, make it easy for yourself by hitting send plus archive. You can activate this button by going to the general settings and toggling on show send an archive button in reply. Gmail spam filter is super effective, but sometimes things that you actually want to see end up in there. 
since it's emptied automatically every 30 days, set a reminder for yourself to scan it at least once a month to ensure nothing valuable is lost. With filters, you can set up powerful automations. Go to settings, filters, and blocked addresses, and you'll find an option to create a new filter based on all kinds of parameters. After setting it up, you can have Gmail automatically perform a host of different actions, such as skipping the inbox, forwarding it to a different address, or even deleting it. One powerful use case for filters can be to forward your favorite newsletters to your reading app, if it has an incoming email address, by skipping the inbox, marking it as read, and forwarding it into there. No manual cleanup needed. If you find yourself regularly messaging the same set of individuals, save yourself the hassle of constantly adding them to the recipients individually and group them instead. Simply go to contacts, select the contacts you want to group, and then select select Manage Labels to assign a string that you can type in the recipients field in a new email, which will automatically add all of them in there. My final tip for this video is to keep it simple. You don't have to implement every single thing you saw in this video right away. As long as you're able to respond to everything in time, as long as you don't get overwhelmed when you look at your inbox, and as long as you're able to find anything you need within a minute, you're doing pretty well. You don't have to keep on over-optimizing or worry about whether you're running the perfect email system. Now, I hope these tips were helpful. And if you learned at least one new thing from this video, I want you to smash the like button. And I would also like you to share this video with your friends, with your coworkers, with your family, anybody that you're emailing with. Because if they apply these tips, you're going to benefit from that as well as a recipient. So spread the word. And if this video hits 230 likes, I'm going to release a part two.